the flip is up guys it's your girl Brooklyn and welcome to my channel thank you guys so much for clicking on today's video I'm super excited to film this as you can tell from the title of today's video we are going to be doing a second trimester recap which is insane to think that I'm already filming this video because like I say in every pregnancy video of mine I feel like I literally just got pregnant and just told Danny that we were pregnant and now I'm already in my third trimester what? That is insane. It's so nuts. So if you've been following along with me for a little while now, you will know that I am pregnant. And for the first trimester, instead of doing a first trimester recap, I did a first trimester Q&A, which I really enjoyed. I love doing Q&As. I think they're so much fun. But for the second trimester, I thought it would be kind of cool to explain the differences between my first and second trimester and what happened and all of that fun stuff instead of just answering random questions. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you do, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because it really helps support my channel and let's get into today's video so like I said previously I did a Q&A for my first trimester video so I'm not gonna go into detail about my first trimester I will make sure to leave a link for that in the description box below for you guys if y'all want to check that out but just a small tiny recap my first trimester was pretty great it wasn't all that bad the only thing that kind of sucked about it is I had zero energy and I'm a very 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 energetic person so that was a really big change for me but other than that it wasn't all that bad I wasn't extremely nauseous up until week 8 when week 8 hit from week 8 to week 13 I was nauseous 24 7 I was constantly sick it didn't matter what I did it didn't matter what I ate I was just sick all the time but with that being said I didn't actually vomit I just became extremely nauseous but it was one of those things where it was like I needed to eat right then or it was gonna become worse if that makes sense which is kind of backwards because most people when they're nauseous it's the opposite effect they don't want to eat anything but for me it was like if I didn't eat anything I would throw up that's a quick little recap and the reason that I wanted to tell you that part is because I'm gonna be kind of explaining some stuff so I wanted to just kind of give you all a little backstory that my first trimester was pretty smooth other than the fact that I didn't have a ton of energy like at all and then you know I just got really sick for a few weeks and then after that it, it kind of it stopped and went away it was weird it was really 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 bizarre I was super excited for the second trimester because everyone told me second trimester is when you're gonna start feeling like yourself again and you're gonna get your energy back and they were not wrong I loved my second trimester I finally felt like myself again all of my energy came back I legit felt like a brand new woman it was just such a lovely time and I'm really scared for the third trimester because everyone has told me Brooklyn enjoy your second trimester while it lasts because when the third one comes you're gonna be hating life again and I'm just not ready for that to happen and so far it hasn't but granted I'm at the very beginning of my third trimester so we'll see how this goes but yeah that's definitely been the biggest change from the first to the second trimester is that I just started feeling like myself again I had all the energy in the world I wasn't tired or drained throughout the day and fatigued and in my first trimester I couldn't eat chicken or shrimp and that's like my go-to I absolutely love chicken and shrimp and by the second trimester I was able to start eating foods again that I wasn't able to eat in my first trimester all of the nausea completely subsided it was just complete 180 from the first trimester so that was that was good so I got super sick from weeks 8 to week 13 and then week 14 hit and I had actually caught some kind of a bug I got extremely sick during Christmas and New Year's we were literally so sick for the holidays around week 15 to week 16 I started getting extremely bad migraines if you didn't know apparently migraines are a very lovely symptom that one may acquire during the second trimester I ended up getting them and my migraines got so bad that it caused me to vomit every single day for a week straight luckily my migraines only lasted a week oh my gosh I just can't even imagine going through that for longer than what I did if you're having migraines while pregnant I am so sorry if you're having migraines in general, I am so sorry because those things suck monkey butt. I am not a fan whatsoever. But I had really bad migraines. Um, I ended up telling my OB about it and they actually gave me medication for the nausea and migraines. But then by the time I got the medication, everything had actually subsided. So I never actually took the meds. But you know, if you're wondering if you are sick or having really bad migraines or whatever, talk to your OB because they might be able to help you out with some of that. I, I, I luckily didn't need the medicine, Ew, but it's there if you need it, I guess. So yeah, it was, oh, that was just not a fun time. But yeah, that only lasted about the first like week or two maybe three weeks of the second trimester and then week 17 hit and your girl would 
bag, baby. I felt like a brand new woman. My appetite increased. I had my energy back. I was able to eat foods now that I couldn't eat in the first trimester. For a good example, I am obsessed with chicken and shrimp. I've always loved chicken and shrimp. In the first trimester, I could not eat chicken or shrimp to save my life. I would vomit. Um, even the smell of shrimp would make me sick. It was weird. Week 17 hit and I was able to start eating these foods again. Oh, it was such a blessing. Your girl was loving it. I was feeling myself. Week 19 comes along. This was a very monumental week for me. It was probably one of my favorite weeks up until this point because at week 19, I felt baby move for the first time. And I had people asking me, starting at like week 14, like, oh, have you felt baby kick yet? Oh, have you felt baby move? Like, have you felt the flutters? And I thought I was broken. Like, I thought something was wrong. So I was like, I haven't felt anything. They're like, oh, well, it kind of feels like gas bubbles. And I'm like, okay, but I'm constantly gassy. Like, how am I gonna know if it's her? And they're like, oh, you'll know the difference. I felt her move. I was at work sitting down and I actually felt her move and like roll for the first time at week 19. And it was just such a magical feeling. It was the best feeling ever. I love being able to feel her moving kick. But a lot of stuff actually happened during week 19. This was a pretty significant week up until this point because this is where a lot of changes started to take place. My belly actually had its first official like pop. So it went from, you know, looking like I had eaten one too many tacos for lunch and just became bloated to it looks like I actually have a pregnant belly, which was what I had been waiting for up until this point. In my mind, I know my figure. I know what I've always looked like I noticed very early on that my body was changing and I noticed all the changes and I was like oh it looks like I'm showing and I look back at pictures now and I'm like girl just wait you have no idea to other people it obviously it didn't look like I was pregnant whatsoever so week 19 hit and it actually started looking like I was pregnant which was <laughs> so cool but because my belly was starting to grow more at this point and my uterus was starting to expand to allow baby you know to have more room to grow this is when i actually started noticing the round ligament pains those are no fun but i did start getting round ligament pains at this point and i also started getting super itchy all over mainly like my boobs and legs oh just talking about it is making me itch myself right now starting at the beginning of the pregnancy i noticed once getting pregnant that i would get pretty itchy but it was around like week 19 where it got really bad to the point where it was almost like a rash like i had little bumps all over my legs i would itch so much that it would cause myself to scab up all over my legs it's super gross and not a attractive in any way shape or form. I didn't do anything specific to stop the itching. It just kind of went away on its own but apparently that's pretty common too and like with the blood flow and all that fun stuff. Yeah that part sucked. I was not a fan of the itching whatsoever. It was very miserable and it happened mainly at night too. So I was constantly moving at night. I couldn't sleep. I just couldn't keep my legs still to save my life. And then one of the other main things that happened is I started getting frequent urination which obviously up until this point I had been having frequent urination but it was on a different level now. I would go to the restroom, I would pee a ton, and then five minutes later, it felt as if I had drank a gallon of water and had to pee again. You know when you're like doing the pee dance, you're trying to get the key in the front door and you just gotta go so bad you don't think you're gonna be able to hold it, like you don't think you're gonna make it? And that is how it would be. That's the best way to describe it. I would have to pee so much and so bad. It would drive me nuts. And it's still the same to this point. So, you know, if you're wondering, you might as well just embrace the frequent urination because it's gonna happen a pretty much the whole pregnancy and at this point I was waking up about once a night to go to the bathroom and then you know I was also experiencing more cramping but that's kind of like it kind of goes with the whole round ligament pain thing I would just get cramping as if I went for a run and you know had a little cramp on my side so week 20 is like a runner up for my favorite week because at week 20 is when Danny actually felt her kick for the first time it was just the coolest thing we were sitting in the truck I felt her moving and I like grabbed his hand and put it on my belly and then she kicked right away it was just oh it was such a special moment he like started tearing up and it was so cool I um, I just can't get it right week 20 Dini was able to feel her moving kick for the first time not a whole lot changed here I started getting a little more nauseous at this point um, like the nausea kind of came back if you will and it was very sporadic so it didn't happen constantly um and the only other thing that really happened at week 20 that was different was I started getting hot flashes and cold chills so I would get hot flashes randomly and then a few minutes later I would be freezing and I could not figure out why I didn't know what was going on it was it was bizarre so week 20 
21 comes along, I started getting thirsty constantly. Like it just felt like no matter how much water I drank, I just was craving water. I had like cotton mouth. If you followed along with my channel before me getting pregnant, you'll know that I used to drink a gallon of water a day. I have for a very, very long time. I love water, I crave water. So I thought once I got pregnant, it would be the same. Like I would just kind of always want water. That's not at all how this pregnancy has been. I've had to force water down my throat. I just never really want water. I have to consciously think about it. It was bizarre this week because I like could not drink enough water. I was like, give me all the freaking water. Like I'm a flipping fish. Just put it in my mouth right now. I just needed all the water, but no matter how much I drank, did nothing, nothing for me. And then the cramping still continued. Like I was explaining earlier, like as if I went for a run and just kind of got like a little, a little cramp on my side. And then the round ligament pains, those were just getting more frequent and worse if that makes sense. But round ligament pains, they're not painful. They just kind of suck. It just kind of feels like your your tummy's cramping, like menstrual cramps. So for week 22, I think she was going through a growth spurt because I have written down here, week 22, it was similar to week 21 in most ways. At the end of week 22 and into week 23, I've noticed a huge change in my energy. I can sleep for 10 plus hours and still feel like I haven't slept before. And then I put still in the snacking phase, hungry a lot more frequently but doesn't take much food to fill me up. And boy, was this rough. I could not, for the life of me, get enough sleep. Like, I would go to bed at 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, sleep in until like 8.30, 9 o'clock the next morning, and still feel like I didn't get any sleep whatsoever. Now, I know that there also is a thing of like too much sleep, so maybe I was sleeping too much, but it's weird. I, I don't know how to explain it. I just was constantly tired. It didn't matter how little or how much sleep I got. I could not get enough sleep. Like I said, I called it the snacking phase because I would constantly be hungry, but it wouldn't take a lot to fill me up. So I couldn't eat my usual like Brooklyn full meals. It was very small portions of food. So it wouldn't take long at all to fill me up. Like I would get full really quickly, but then I would be hungry every two hours or so. A little snacking phase. I still go through those every now and then. The longer I've gone throughout this pregnancy, I will notice that I'll get super tired one day. I'll be super hungry and then I wake up the next morning and it feels like my belly's gotten bigger. So I definitely think it's like any person going through a growth spurt, you get tired and hungry, your body's just working hard. I definitely can tell when she's going through a growth spurt and I think for week 21, little mama was doing just that. So week 23 hit, still I was constantly tired. It just felt like my energy was slowly depleting at this point. I would sleep for 10 hours throughout the night, wake up in the morning, and then by 3 p.m. felt like I needed a nap. Like I just could not get enough sleep at all. But at this point, I definitely will say that I noticed my belly popping and growing a lot more frequently than it had in the past. And my belly button was almost popping at this point, but hadn't quite popped out all the way. From the moment that I started feeling her kick, she's become a little active thing. And at this point in the pregnancy, she had become a lot more active than she was when I first started noticing her moving and kicking a lot. And I noticed, again, TMI, my nipples were getting even bigger. Like they were the size of freaking pepperonis. Those suckers were flipping massive. And they still are. I'm not gonna lie, they have my the body is such a strange thing. And then at this point, I started noticing the pregnancy brain a lot more. Like pregnancy brain is no joke, y'all. And I think I told y'all in one of my more recent videos how I lost my wallet and had to go to the DMV and get a new ID and I had to get a new debit card and all this stuff. I did all that and then guess what I did? I found my wallet a week later. So now moving on to week 24, this was a fun week too because for the first time ever up until this point, I was able to see, physically see baby girl move in like kick my stomach. So up until this point, I felt it, but I wasn't able to like visually see it. And I was laying on the couch and I felt her move and some, for some reason, something told me, yo Brooklyn, lift your shirt. And I lifted my shirt and saw like a little go across my belly. It was just so cute. And now I see it every day. She a little booger, she moves constantly. And then the only other thing that really happened during week 24 is again, the exhaustion just kept getting worse and worse. I just, it was all consuming at this point and the nausea started kicking in a lot more frequently. It was so kind of sporadic, but it was definitely picking up and she was coming back. 
a lot more frequently. Week 25 continued on, pretty much the same as week 24. Um, I started getting really bad round ligament pains at week 25, like towards the end of week 25. And then I noticed my belly pop again. Yeah, the nausea was still kind of there. It was lingering. It wasn't like crazy, but it was still there. Week 26 is when I first started getting Braxton Hicks, which are, you know, like contractions. It's basically your body's way of preparing for labor. Super fun, very exciting. I've heard that you have Braxton Hicks throughout the whole pregnancy, but this is when I started noticing them a lot. It's really hard to explain. My stomach will get raw card. It is just solid. Yeah, Braxton Hicks started at week 26. And then again, I started becoming um, more exhausted, but I noticed it a lot more after work to the point where I would come home from work and shower and lay down and instantly go to bed. I work 12 hour shifts. I work in the pediatric emergency room, so I'm on my feet all day, every day. So it's a very, uh, I don't wanna say exhausting, job being pregnant it's definitely exhausting it's just it's on the go you're very much like do 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 the majority of the time so i noticed around week 26 that work was starting to kick your girl's booty and i would come home and i would shower most of the time wouldn't even need dinner i would shower and go straight to bed i'd like lay down and be out and i'd literally sleep until the next morning <laughs> when i'd have to wake up and do it all over again and if you know me at Oh, you'll know that I've always been a very active person. Sleeping in for Brooklyn is around like 7.15, 7.30 in the morning, and I don't ever take naps. But it was around this week where I started noticing that I actually needed to take naps throughout the day. So I would allow myself to nap, which I think I've taken a total of three naps this whole pregnancy. But it was around this week where I was like, man, I just feel like I need a nap. I was just wearing myself down. And I would notice that my sleeping in schedule had kind of extended itself so instead of waking up at like 7 15 every morning naturally I was now starting to wake up at like 8 30 8 45 which was so bizarre for me it felt so late I know a lot of y'all are like oh my gosh shut up that's so early but it felt so late I was just so used to waking up at a different time yeah I started sleeping in more and more we're almost there guys we are almost done so week 27 came along and this is when I really started to notice that it was becoming harder for me to follow asleep at night and it was becoming extremely hard for me to stay asleep throughout the night so not only was I waking up to pee I just could not get comfortable I was very uncomfortable constantly throughout the night even like sitting on the couch I would start getting really bad pain like right under my like right shoulder blade and my lower back would just hurt really bad a pregnancy must have here's a little tip for you guys I definitely would recommend getting a pregnancy pillow it was at this point in time where Danny actually surprised me and bought me a pregnancy pillow thank gosh because now I sleep like a baby. It is my favorite thing. Before I was just using our king size pillows in the room and would just put it between my legs, but it was doing nothing. And I just was like, I don't need to spend money on a pregnancy pillow, like it's fine. We have plenty of pillows that we sleep with, I'll be okay. No, I am so, so, so glad this man surprised me with this pillow because it is by far my favorite thing ever. It like shapes my body, it's huge, it makes like a little U. Oh my gosh, it just fits my body like a dream and it is the best thing invented for pregnant women ever. And I also noticed in week 27 that I started getting random pains in my lower back and how my hip and my legs, I'll be standing there and I get a sharp pain like right at my lower right hip and it will shoot down my hip all the way down my leg and it sucks. And I get them a lot more frequently now. She'll move or kick and I get them, it's weird. Or if I sit upright, like right here, my right abdomen will start hurting really bad. So so it's like if I bend over, it hurts. If I sit straight up, it hurts. If I lean back, it hurts. And then on my lower back, the right side of my lower back hurts. I don't know what it is, but yeah, that's pretty much my second trimester. It is true what they say. The second trimester is probably one of the better trimesters. I just got my energy back. I felt like myself. I was able to do more stuff. All the crappy parts of the first trimester kind of disappeared during the second trimester. And it's been great. I don't really know. There's not really a whole lot left to tell you guys. Things are going really good. Good. I'll definitely make a third trimester video for you guys if y'all are interested for that as well. I will do a little belly update for you guys. I'm currently 28 weeks and six days pregnant today. Which is crazy and baby girl is huge. Let me just show you. Okay, so I don't know if y'all can tell, but I can tell a difference in my belly even with a t-shirt on. But this is me with just like a t-shirt on right now. But right here. This is little mama from the side. She is getting huge, y'all. She's big, but she's growing in there. You know, she's obviously just gonna get bigger, which is nuts. 
think about. But yeah, that's her right now. I definitely carry very low. I have been told that, which I didn't even think anything of it, but I definitely carry really, really low. She moves under my belly button a lot and I'm starting to feel her more up here. Within the last week, I've noticed her like up higher, but when she kicks and moves, it's always like way on down here. Little mama likes to chill down here, but yeah, I'm definitely carrying pretty low. I'm so sorry, this is not a good view, but that's my belly button. It's like, it's hard to explain. It's got like a little lip on it. <laughs> But it hasn't quite fully popped all the way out yet. But yeah, so far things are going good. I don't have any stretch marks up until this point. And you know, like I said before, if I get them, it is what it is. Do I want them necessarily? No. But they are a beautiful meaning of bringing life into this world. So I will embrace them if I get them, but I'm gonna do what I can to prevent them. So yeah, so far that's been going good and she's growing. She's growing. You know. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I just, I feel like I'm forgetting something. So if I did, I'm so sorry. If there's anything that y'all are curious about that maybe I didn't hit or touch on, please feel free to leave me questions in the comments below. I will be sure to get back to y'all with any questions and concerns you may have because I am almost 100% sure I'm gonna finish recording this and I'm gonna be editing this video and be like, dang, now my brookie forgot to say this. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because it really helps for my channel and I will see you in my next video. Bye!